pull up a seat. You get to watch this episode for free, bro. I mean, everyone else gets to watch them for free How anyway. Much work? Just, I'll be 15 minutes max. I told my boss I'm gonna be 15 minutes. Just turn the car broke down or something. Ready? Welcome back to Sunday Sessions with me, Big Half. And today we're doing something a little bit different. Blue skies, summertime. I want something tropical and acidic and delicious. So today we're doing a little sea bream carpaccio. Now, for those of you that don't know what carpaccio is, it's dressed raw fish. So I think ceviche, tartar, they're all from like the same realm. Um, essentially this fish isn't raw. Once the acid from our limes and our coconut penetrates the fish, our fish is somewhat cooked. So I've kindly asked my fishmonger to fill it a sea bream for me. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the skin off very quickly. So you make sure your fish is dry. Make a little cut here at the bottom. Now, I've made a nice little cut. I'm gonna hold my knife still and I'm just gonna pull my fish, right? And I've kept my knife at like a 45 degree angle. And off comes the skin. Now, if you work in a Michelin star restaurant, you can turn this into a crisp. Or if you live in the real world, you just put it in the bin. So look, skin off. I'm just gonna take away, so this white bit of the fish here is the fish's belly. And I'm just gonna take that piece off. Just make it a little bit more uniform for us to cut. Before I took the skin off a fish, I left it out of the fridge for about half an hour, 40 minutes. We don't want stone cold fish. We want it to come up almost to room temperature just so that it all eats well and it's not like cold fish and delicious dressing. It all needs to marry together. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make nice beauty, beautiful little slices that we're gonna lay on our plate. Now it's important that your knife's clean just so we can get nice thin bits I'm just going to lay it out. So I'm just going to go nice and thin. Take your time. Make sure your knife's sharp. Now the thinner you cut this fish, the quicker the dressing can get into it and cook it out, right? Now listen, ask your fishmonger to fillet your fish. You can even ask them to skin it. Um, I wouldn't do this with a fish from the supermarket. I'd build, build a relationship with your local fishmonger and say to him, listen, I'm doing a dish that's raw meat, whether it's sashimi, ceviche, carpaccio, and tell him I want the freshest I can possibly have. And it's, this dish is all about how fresh the fish is. The first time I made this dish, I was in Sri Lanka, and I went to a little fishmonger just on the street and asked him what he had and he said, I've got some butter fish that I've caught this morning. And I was like, right, I'll have that. It's all about listening to your fishmonger. Those guys aren't there to rip you off and say to you, oh yeah, we're gonna give you turbot because we want you to spend all the money. Listen to your fishmonger, build that relationship and just let the people who know the most about it point you in the right direction. They're all cut uniform. So if they're a little on top of each other, it doesn't really matter. Now, if you're going to do this for guests at a party, or if you had someone coming over that you wanted to make something special for, you could leave that fish cut on the plate, wrap it in cling film, stick it in the fridge, and again, 45 minutes before that person comes over, pull it out, let it come up to room temp, and then think about dressing it. So, our fish element's done, right? I'm just going to set this, this plate to one side, and we're going to move on to dressing. So, 
Normally with ceviche and carpaccio and stuff, it's all about acid. When I was in Sri Lanka, there's coconuts on the side of the road, people drink them, and I was like, why not use a coconut to dress some fish? It's not that obscene. So I've got a couple of coconuts. I'm just gonna break it into this. So I've got a, a sieve. Cut this piece of J cloth. Some J cloth. And I'm gonna attempt to break this coconut. I've only done this once. I've got this wooden thing and the coconut. Okay, we're in. I think we're in now, we need a little. Right, juice of one coconut. How much did you end up with? That's quite a bit actually. Um, let's do another coconut. And this time make it look like I know what I'm doing, right? So. Way. Coconut juice, done. Save the middles, dehydrate them, eat them with a spoon. Also, the shells are great for cooking over. In Sri Lanka, they use a lot of coconut shells as charcoal, and it gives you a really different flavor. Right, so that's our coconut water, right? So this is gonna be what gives us the moisture in our dish. So we've got some coconut water. Sweet, coconutty. It's like a deep flavor, right? So. That's our base. What we need to add to this to make it even better is some acid. So I've got the juice. We'll start with one lime and we'll taste as we go. Got some lime juice. Now this acid in the lime juice is what's gonna almost pickle our fish, right? This is what's gonna start to cook it. So if you just tuned in, I'm not making pina colada but we're moving in that direction. So at the minute in there, I've got sweetness, I've got sour. I want a little bit of fire. Now I'm gonna use ginger just to give it a little fieriness, right? A little hum, a little background, a little ooh, excitement on the palate. I'm not gonna use loads because it's quite an intense flavor. I've got about an eighth of a tablespoon. That can go in. Give it a little mix. Again, we're gonna taste. Sweet, fire, acid. Paving the way, right? So, that's pretty much done. Dressing's done, fish is cut. All we need to do now is stick a little bit of our dressing on our fish. Just before we start to garnish and make shit look pretty, we want the fish to be allowed to sit in this little juice for at least 15 minutes, right? So, we're gonna go on with a good crack of salt. I'm just gonna spoon over this dressing, right? covered and we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes just for the acid and the salt to start working on the fish and start to cure it right beautiful so we've got fish we've got acidity we've got fire we've got sweetness I want to add toppings 
that accentuate those flavors, right? So I've got some coriander, a passion fruit, tomatoes, and a couple green chilies. Our fish has been sat for about five minutes, and as you can see, just on the edges, starting to turn a little bit white, right? We're starting to cure. Now, the longer you let this sit, the fish changes texture, texturally. So if you let it sit for five minutes, you've still got like that raw sashimi vibe. If you let it sit for 20 minutes, you've got more of a chew. There's more bite to the fish. So I quite like it fresh and vibrant. So I'm only gonna let it sit for five minutes. I don't want it any longer than that. I don't want to chew on bits of fish. Let it sit for 20 minutes, you'll understand what I mean by chew. When it's like this, it's almost just like falls apart, breaks away the little muscles in the fillet slowly peel away from each other as you eat it. But let's move on to garnish. So I'm gonna go with a passion fruit. The fuck I sharpen this knife? With a passion fruit, right? So in here you've got a whole load of beautiful jammy little seeds. Again, this is acidity and sweetness. It's already flavors that we've built in our carpaccio. Take a little spoon. And just blob them about the place. Look a little bit like tadpoles. But in the nicest way possible. Now again, the juice from these passion fruits is gonna carry in the sauce that we've already put on our fish, right? It's also a little textural change. You've got like a little pop of acidity when you bite down on the seeds. Just like that. Now, I'm just gonna squash and tear some of these beautiful datterini tomatoes. Again, sweet, acidic, delicious. Just like summer vibes, tropical. Got a yellow one as well. A little color change, a little change in flavor. Plunk those about. Yeah. I have some green chilies. I'm just gonna chop as thin as I can get them, right? So these little green chilies are fucking absolute rockets, so do be careful. Try to spread them out in a way that if you pick up one bit of fish, you'll get a chili, you get some passion fruit, you get a little bit of tomato. You don't want to be that unlucky person that picks up one bit of fish and has got two big bits of chili on. You'd be ruined afterwards. So make sure it's got a good scattering. Again, please wash your hands after cutting chilies like this because it's a one way ticket to fucking pain. Green chilies. Gonna give the rim of my plate a little rub down. And then I'm just gonna go on with some bits of coriander. Try to get a scattering where every bit of coriander gets to touch a piece of fish. Whatever we've put on the top, right, has the ability to add flavor to the juice that the fish is sat in. The coriander is gonna give us that level of like vibrancy and color. The passion fruit is gonna provide that little bit of extra sweetness that the coconut needs to come out. The green chilies are gonna give the fire from the ginger. It's all flavors that marry together and have almost the same, the same profiles, but done in different ways, right? So the only thing I, I want to do to this personally is just for a little bit of pepperiness, it's a tiny bit of some good olive oil, right? Again, this is a little suggestion of olive oil. And like it sits on top of the, on top of the liquid, so it doesn't mix in. And then to finish, I've just got some really nice Turkish chili flakes. Mm. 
That's it. Tropical, delicious. It's like Rubicon and Ma Malibu. Get me a little cocktail and you're good to go. So this is a little sea bream carpaccio, passion fruit and chili. We all go to parties and take fucking coleslaw and potato salad and fucking things that people don't want to eat. Be that person that comes in with something colorful and vibrant and different and be like, oh, here's something I just knocked up for you guys. And you're gonna get all the credit. Don't tell them that you got it off me. You just fucking make it. It's delicious. Should we have a go? So look, I've got a little bite with everything in it. Passion fruit, slightly cured fish, coriander, chili flakes, the dressing. There you go. Like those chilies are fucking rockets, bro. <laughs> so yeah, like clean fish, got a little bit of salt, got sweetness from coconut, fire from the green chilies, acidity from the tomato, sweetness from the passion fruit. It's just summer on a plate, man. It's absolutely delicious, if I do say so myself. But do something a little different, man. Buy some really nice fish, some top quality ingredients, and just pretend you're on holiday. I'm not lying, those chilies are rockets, bro. Summer, summer, summer time. When we sit back and eat raw fish. Summer time. The best part of that tune is the, is it a Roy Ayers in tune? It's like, wow, wow, Arif! Arif! Come here! Right, my brother doesn't eat fish, right? Um, but he eats a lot of sushi, so we'll see what he thinks. Yes, come. Come. What do you mean, no? I'm going to feed you. Just come here. Doesn't matter. You're in a hoodie, brother. I'm in a fucking apron. What is it? Don't worry. Just put it in your mouth. Just eating raw fish. Yeah. Thanks. Take it, wash up the plate and bring it back, yeah? Can I have it back, please? Really? Yes. Let me do the closing bits so you can eat it. It's got passion fruit on it. Yeah. Thanks. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Rock up to someone's party, take all the credit, and just enjoy your summer, man. We're almost out, fam, do you get me? So let's make it a little special. Cheers. <laughs>